Well, hi, and hey, thanks for joining me in my shop here. Uh, are you being driven nuts by this record player? Because I am. Now, at the, last of the, at the end of the last video, uh, I reached the conclusion that I didn't actually, I don't think I actually said it out loud. It was in my head. After I finished the video and thinking about it a little more, I kind of reached the conclusion that somehow this intermediate wheel has shrunk. Its, its diameter has shrunk. Now, yes, I, I did grind the surface of it, but that only removed a fraction of a millimeter. And the problem of the slippage in this record player was apparent right from the start. So that's a conclusion I reached. Now, I've, I've done, I don't know, I've done a hundred record players over the last four or five years. Easily a hundred. I've never had one where the intermediate wheel had somehow shrunk. Uh, it's far-fetched to me. But... I did wake up this morning, and one of the thoughts, yes, I, I did wake up, I am awake. One of the thoughts I had right away was, I've got another one of these wheels. I've got another one of these intermediate wheels somewhere in my collection. So I dug around and dug around and dug around, and look what I found. Look, it's almost identical. That's fantastic. It's identical in every respect, except it's not the same size by any means. So. So I spent a fair bit of time digging this guy up. was pretty excited about it, but it looks exactly right, but no luck there. So another thing that has come to, to my mind and also the mind of a number of you is, well, what about those motor mounts? Now, in a lot of record players, the motor itself, the actual motor part, is suspended from the record player with uh, rubber mount uh, motor mounts and those rubber motor mounts give up as they have given up pretty much in this record player too and then the motor tips because of the mounts are no longer right it maybe it sinks down or, or it tips and the spindle the sticking out of the motor adopts a new position relative to all the drive wheels this is a complicated one most record players just have a one intermediate wheel but that tipping can be enough. Uh, if, it, if it's not enough to, to, to reduce the traction, sometimes it'll affect the speed setting and the motor will actually be in the wrong position and play at the wrong speed. It'll all seem to work, except when you put it on 33, you get 45. These are all motor mount problems. The difference in this record player is it's not really motor mounts uh, that are done with grommets. It's the whole sub-assembly that is mounted up to the deck. Well, here's the three, three points where it's mounted. So if the motor mounts have, have, have caused some kind of tipping, this whole assembly is tipping. And there's no changes relative to anything in here. The motor shaft is not relocating itself relative to these wheels or anything. That's why very early on, uh, when I got interested in the motor mounts and fixing them, I then decided, nah, there's no need to do it because it can't influence the operation of the uh, of the machine, contrary to most of them, most most there are a lot of record players. One of the primary problems with them is those rubber motor mounts. And then, you know, I just replace them with uh, regular rubber washers. I, I don't have the proper motor mounts, so often I'm just kind of fiddling in some some flat washers, flat rubber washers. This one, if if and, and it is tipped on a bit of an angle. This wheel back on. So as, as this thing tips incorrectly, this wheel will tip relative to the platter. It won't change its position relative to the in, this other intermediate wheel or these ones, just with the platter. Could that be the problem? That in fact the slipping is not here. I'm very sure it is, but in fact the slipping is happening in here, only on the two outer speeds. So, I, you know, I, I don't think so. I'm 99% uh, sure that that's not the problem. But then, occasionally, I'm wrong about that kind of stuff. <laughs> just just once in a while. So, because I don't know what else to do, I can't, I can't resize this. I don't have another one to put in its place. I may as well go ahead and fiddle around with the, let's call it the motor assembly mounts, and try to level them out and get them the way they should be just in case 
that's really the problem. I mean, I really should do this anyway. If I had uh, grommets and remind myself later tonight, I'm going to order some. So I have a supply of them because this kind of stuff happens all the time on these record players. Um, uh, if, if, if I had them handy, I would, I would be a little more aggressive with fiddling with them. But I don't actually have, you know, perfect replacement motor mounts. There's some strange washers in here. What are the chances I have exactly the parts for this record player, even if I was stocking those kinds of parts? I don't have, I won't, wouldn't likely have exactly the right part for this, but we can certainly fiddle something in there. We can certainly get it leveled out and be a little better. Maybe the problems will go away and I'll just have a little bit of egg on my face. I think there's still a little bit of area on my face that doesn't have egg on it from other things that have happened <laughs> over the years. So that's my plan today. Uh, so let's start by just taking a look at those uh, motor mounts. Now why am I thinking there's something else I wanted to talk about before I started this? Well, it'll come to mind. If it, if it should, it will come to mind. It's been a couple of days since I've been in here. Uh, it's given me some time to, to think hard about this. Now let's try it like that. Okay, so I'm not going to see much like that. So we have one, two, three. Let's take a closer look at them because they are strange. I mean, these are strange how this is done. So we look at this first one. Now that I look at it even closer, well, there's the black foamy washers, and then there's the rubbery grommety washer down in there. I notice this is a split, split hole here. So we've got, starting from the screw head, black, black, brown. Let's call it that. Now, if we look at this next one, well, it's nothing like that. It's the other way around. Now, now the black washers down on the bottom so we got brown black just one washer and then in the back here we've got I would say that's just the rubber grommet there there's an awful lot of movement available this is going to hang down this way on its own weight. Right now it's hanging this way because of just the way, you know, it's tipped on its side. It'll normally hang like that. Now that washer looks great, eh? It looks like it's never been compressed. It looks like it's never done any hard duty. This one, this one looks typical of an old, whatever this material is, I don't know what it is. The, uh, the grommet part, the brownish part. And the fact that there's two of these here, you know, this really looks like somebody else tried to level out the platter or tried things, tried things, maybe to overcome the very same problem that I'm working on. And maybe that last person having experience with this, you know, drive problems being related to these grommets, maybe this is what he focused on. And he, he took, he took the black foamy grommet off here and stuck it up here. Now let's just take a look at the actual angles of this thing. So, not very good in the camera is it? Not just because it's out of focus but there's just so much metal parts but but let's switch to the other camera here. So what I can see is that you would expect this plate here which is the, uh, oh, it goes right up into the switch here. The whole sub-assembly plate, you would expect it to be parallel, I would anyway, with the deck. That's this part up here. So the two of them would be parallel, you know. <laughs> That's parallel in case you're not sure what parallel is. Um, it certainly isn't. For, for sure, if we, if we figure this is the correct arrangement, it, it looks to me like it is, rubber grommet and then the black spacer this one's done differently the plate is closer to the deck and you can see the angle on it 
that would tip that would you know it's hard for me to say this but I think it would tip tip the uh, idler or the as I like to call them intermediate wheel um, a fraction away from the uh, um, platter well I think the simple thing we should do is just try to try to first try to just level this thing out and it's pretty clear just moving these washers around is going to do it. Why would somebody have done what they did here? Now there's another thing too, and that's the uh, screw tightness. Let, let me switch back to the other camera here. I'm going to take a peek at that. The screw tightness. So how, how tight are the screws here? Okay, so here's the first one here. You can see the screw is barely coming through the nut. In fact, they're, they're pretty level. Okay, now this one is much tighter. And the third one is very similar, even a touch tighter yet. So, this guy, you know, it's the result of putting in two washers here. Let's straighten this one out first. strap and I got hooked on the screw threads. There we are. There's a sleeve here. So the sleeve is designed when you tighten up the screw, you're tightening it up essentially on the sleeve. So you're not just limitlessly compressing these things. There is a limit to how tight you can get this. And of course, you put too many things in here, like like this one is. Tighten this down onto the sleeve. These things will be squished right back to where they were. And that's probably why the screw wasn't uh, all the way through. This is the one that was barely through the nut. So you tighten them all the way down, you would have just. But the problem with not tightening it all the way down is it's not it's not tight. It's not tight at all. It's amazing this didn't shake itself apart. So here we go. So we have a copper, copper washer, and this what looks very much like a rubber tire. Uh, I may not be able to get these guys separated here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to leave that as a unit. There's a unit. Yuck. Now there's another piece in here still. How's that happen? Kind of caught on the ground strap there. So I think this is really broken. It's really like this. And then this is the slot area that slides into here. And the tall rubber side I think has been pushed up inside this black one here. And I'm not sure I can separate them. Oh, this black thing's coming apart. Yeah, the whole thing is just going to shatter. I'll have nothing in a moment. This 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 piece is not so bad. So just for the sake of experimenting in that, I can put this kind of back together. Fooey on this. Let's try it like this. This may not be right, but the objective here is to uh, correct the spacing. There are 
more more correct the spacing, I guess is the best I can say. Let's put this guy this way. We'll get the most out of him, I think. Obviously, I'm going to have to uh, break down an order. some kind of set of parts here for, for working on this situation. I kind of got my way through with just your regular household stuff, but uh, I'm trying to get that ground strap in there too. So the sleeve doesn't come through. The sleeve runs into the deck and stops the screw at that height. Wow. I think I'm going to fit this in here. I'm going to match this one. If I'm going to match this one, this has to go in. My guess is as long as they all match, that's that's a pretty good that's a pretty good situation to be in. I'm gonna leave the ground strap out of the picture right now because I just can't. Uh, hey. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. The sleeve will not fit through the hole in this washer. So I'm going to put it this way. This may not be in any way correct. I'm just aiming for a balanced result. I'm pretty sure I have to order a new uh, intermediate wheel anyway. I will find a supplier who can supply all this stuff. Uh, this is just going to be kind of hanging here. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? Even with just the two screws in, this thing is uh, pretty solid just on the two screws. Okay, so that has actually leveled this out quite nicely. Now, this back one definitely appears to be too far down. So I'm going to loosen this one and I'll try to shove one of these in behind it. Pull it back out. Now how does it end up like that? I thought the screw could only go so far because of the sleeve. Isn't that the case? It doesn't really matter what I put in here. It's definitely tight. Okay, so the only possibility here, let's look at this under the uh, close-up camera again. Okay, so when I look at this grommet here, it looks really good. Suspiciously good. That one versus this one, which is also in two pieces now, versus this one, which looks like it's shot too, but this one looks really nice. So I'm sure what happened here is somebody had a new grommet they stuck in here. Maybe the ones that were here were totally shot. They stuck this in and then tried to somehow fiddle with the balance on these three points to uh, correct the traction. And you know, maybe they got it to work and it worked for a while. And now it's come to me many years later again and uh, no longer working properly. So what should I do about this? 
I should do what I said I was gonna do. Washer it out. Washer it out. You know, it doesn't actually work. There's no there's no question it's not parallel this way now. Yet the screw is in on the sleeve. It's just, it's the size of this washer. It's too big. Intermediate wheel too small, washer too big. Actually, turn this around. Pop, pop this out. It may, it may just, it may just destroy it. Let me do it. There it comes. Okay, I'm just going to spin it around the other way. Based on my uh, perception of how this works and all the angles involved, uh, changing these can't have any effect. If 45, if the speed 45 was slipping also, so all, everything was slipping all the time, then I'd, I'd be much more suspicious about this. You know what, maybe I'm just going to stick it like that, stick it like that. Again, we are, we are only experimenting here. on either. Again, it's just an experiment. It's an experiment in putting in screws here. Because these are sleeved screws, once they're tightened, um, the motor has every chance of being in exactly its proper design position. This isn't a question of how, how much you tighten down the screws. I've got some washers and stuff here. Let's. So we, we still don't have a really well balanced situation here. fighting with me now. with the lock washers and stuff like that. So all these screws are tightened up against their sleeves. These two uh, are, there's very little between the screw head and the plate. This one's got a bit of a washer here. So the thing is still tipped, 
based on these washers a little bit. But I think it's in a different enough position now to give it a try. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please place your bets. seems to be completely uh, compromised. Cheapers, you know what it's compromised on? I apologize for that. See the, the screw? <laughs> oh, so now I know what the guy was trying to do. So, believe it or not, the screw that's coming through under here, you can't see it, is rubbing on the bottom of this. The nut is now the screw is up higher, it's rubbing on the bottom of this. This isn't even set down f properly on the on the shaft here. Well that's wacko. How can that be? How can that be? How can that be? The position of the washers is wrong. It must, the whole thing has to be up higher. And that's exactly what it, you had done here. It, it, it lifted it up. And that seems to be fixing a problem that shouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah, the only way is to shim this higher. So I, I have to redo this over here. So, hey, it's an experiment. Okay, so this 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 is stuck together. It's only going above or below. I, I don't want to separate it because I'm sure there'll be nothing left of it. And this one, I got to go fetch all my uh, my washers here. See what I can do. Most of the money in the Trump Foundation comes not from Donald Trump, but from vendors. The guy who makes his neckties in China, the people who own the World Wrestling uh, Entertainment Operation, and others. And Trump has used a lot of the money in his foundation, which is very small, it's got about $1.3 million at the moment, to do things for himself. Uh, he's paid off legal obligations, used it to settle lawsuits, uh, bought two paintings of himself, one of which is on display at a Trump uh, resort, and to buy a, a Tim Tebow football helmet. That's called self-dealing. You're not allowed to use charitable dollars uh, that you control for your own benefit. And he made a $25,000 campaign contribution to the Attorney General of Florida at a time when her staff was... Okay, so well, that was pretty interesting, but you didn't hear the part before the part you heard, which was really interesting. But I won't go into it. Okay, now. Let's just... Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. I think it's clearing the, uh, the nut now. Won't bother. Uh, yeah, feels okay. Okay, I think we're okay. Uh, we'll run it like this. Let's run it like this to start with. 
So it switched on 33, still plugged in. Well, it's definitely turning. Oh, it's really good traction. I don't know if I ever actually tested it this way, didn't I? Still seems to be right at the end of its of its of its travel. That's right, yeah. And if you put the platter on, it moves this way, and then you start the skipping. Maybe a smaller wheel would be better. Okay, all bets are down now, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I don't know. See, when you turn the platter backwards, it draws all the parts together in there. And then they, they because they, they can't turn, I feel they're breaking. When I go the other way, it pushes the parts apart, especially the uh, intermediate wheel is kind of pushed forward a little bit. Okay, enough talk. Let's give it a go. Here we go. Hey, it's not bad. That's not too bad. Oh, my cameras. <laughs> I froze my cameras. I gotta stop doing that. Maybe. Maybe the magic reset will work here. Let's see. Ta da! Yeah, I was able to reset it. Yeah, knock both my cameras out again. Uh, that's kind of scary. I think sooner or later I'm gonna I'm gonna blow something up. Okay, so we'll put this power off. Put this on 45. No problem there. Oh man, alive! I better. Okay, 78. And if this works, uh, I have to eat my hat. Here we go. That didn't look so good. Nothing. A small improvement on 33. Actually, it's a significant improvement on 33. Encouraged to to uh, really establish proper uh, grommeting, let's call it that, uh, similar grommeting all through those three connections, and then see how this works. I think I'm going to do that off camera, uh, so you don't have to watch me fiddle with screws for too long. And we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, you know exactly what I'm doing, so we'll see what, we'll see how it comes out. Okay, so I've put in similar sets of washers everywhere. This one I left actually with the washers it had on it. After I fiddled with it, I saw it was really achieving the proper dimension anyway. And so I've checked the spacing like a so, like a so, and like a so. So they are equal. about all the original grommets and uh, washers are totally shot now just from me handling them they're really really not much life in them okay back on with the intermediate wheel seems okay back on with the platter too good. Well, maybe. Won't, won't, won't turn backwards. Anyway. Okay, we're on 33. Let's give it a go. Better than it was originally. Okay, 45. Try not to knock out my cameras here. 
I mean, I, can, I can't stop that. I have to push really hard. I mean, this is the way it should be on every speed. And 78. Well, it sure doesn't look like 78, does it? Okay, so I'm not surprised. This is really what I expected, that altering the uh, washers on that subassembly, motor subassembly frame, whatever you want to call it, just isn't changing enough to affect the drive. So I'm right back to where I was. This wheel is too small. And like I said, I've never seen anything like it. Um, yeah. Bingo. So if somebody fiddled around with the motor mounts, somebody replaced this. This is not the original. They had one in their junk box and they stuck it in there. I, mean, I have no way of knowing if this is the original or not. But that would explain it. He took, he took the original and took his junk box one and went, yeah, that's pretty good. Popped it on. Maybe it worked enough for him to return it. Maybe he gave up at that point and said, here you go, you can play 45s, but you can't play anything else. Who knows? Who knows? Well, that's my story. My story is this is actually not even the correct one. There we are. That's it. So I have to order, I have to order one of these. Uh, I'm going to have to order it. I just poked around the internet very briefly. I've never had to buy one of these. They are available. Uh, either as new old stock or there's even guys who will manufacture these for you and like thirty forty dollars to get something like that here into Canada it's not the end of the world but I think that's where I am I, I just don't see that there's anything else I can try here um, and, and by my in the last video at the very end I really convinced myself that this just isn't big enough and now I've got a reason why it might not be big enough it may be not original Okay, well, thanks for watching. I'm going to have to uh, speak with the owner of this uh, before I go any further with it. And then I'm going to order the part. This is going to go away. This guy and his matching receiver and amplifier that have been quietly waiting for their chance to play sound out of this record player. And unfortunately, even though they've been very patient on my bench waiting, they're going to be disappointed because it's all got to go away. I'm going to have to start another project while I order the wheel. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry it's kind of gone this way, but you know, when I make these videos, I this is all live. I really don't know what's going to happen next. And most of the time, I don't even know what's happening right at the moment. <laughs> so, well, let's see what else I can put on the bench here and get some progress on it. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, all your comments, by the way, I am peeking at them. When, I, when I'm doing one of these projects and I think I'm still in the zone where I can fight my way out of it, I, I carry on without reading too many comments. Or any comments. When I really get stuck and my bucket has gone dry for ideas, then I do start reading comments to see what uh, what people are suggesting in that. Anyways, we'll see you on the next video.